aliens, right? Story came out from Harvard. Rob, I don't know if you have the story or not, if you want to pull it up. Harvard researcher says aliens may already live on Earth. Mm. This came out last week, okay? from This is from Newsweek. If you want to go a little lower, uh, zoom in a little bit, Rob. A study by Harvard social science researchers suggests that aliens may have been living on Earth for a while. The research paper, which is yet to be peer-reviewed, suggests that life forms from other worlds mm. could be living underground on Earth or within the moon, and the UFOs and other unidentified anomalous phenomena uh, may be evidence of them getting around. If you can go a little lower. The study suggests an unconventional uh, uh, explanation of UAP with the authors of the paper hailing from Harvard University Human Flourishing Program. While researchers, the factors that contribute to human well-being and flourishing, the paper has been taken out from ResearchGate since Newsweek published this article, but is still accessible using Internet Archive. That's kind of strange to take yeah, it down. Take what it down. do you think about this? It's pretty interesting. You know, I had uh, Avi Loeb, the head of astrophysics uh, at uh, Harvard, on my podcast. You had him as well, yeah. Yeah, so smart guy, smart, very intelligent yeah. guy, uh, incredible man. And um, you know, obviously, he, you know, he had a lot to say about Oumuamua mm -hmm. being potentially a, an alien craft that utilizes the sun uh, for a gravitational assist, maybe even to get to deep, deep space. Um, and so, I think there's a lot to it. When you now, I always go back to the ancient texts. When you go back to the Sumerian tablets, again. They talk about these these beings talk about going to uh, going to the moon. So they talk about the fact that they were going to go to the moon. Uh, and Enki, I'm sorry, not Enki, and Lil takes his son to the moon, and his son goes, "We must grab the eagles' masks, and because the atmosphere is not as fair." So they're saying that there's something wrong with the atmosphere, which we know the moon has a very very thin mm -hmm. atmosphere. It doesn't have no atmosphere; it's extremely thin. So they put on their eagles' masks and they get into their skyship and forebode. So they left. And went to the moon. Now, if you take the black box audio, which is available from the Freedom of Information Act to the general public now from Apollo 11, you can actually hear Neil Armstrong say something very interesting as they're going over the moon surface in the in the limb. And he's saying, wow, look at those convex craters down there that a convex mean now you're talking a dome structure. He's talking in code. He said, I bet the people down there never get out. And he wasn't joking and nobody laughed. And this is available for anyone to download. It's available to the general public. And you can download the black box redacted audio printout as well from NASA. And it says the same thing. And they didn't redact those statements from that document, which is pretty interesting as well. So, uh, <laughs> you know, he said that there were people down there that never got out. He wonders if they're ever going to get out. Now, if you look at a USGS.gov radar image of the moon, it had from the Arecibo, okay? Arecibo did a deep penetrating radar. Uh, there's a guy on YouTube called um, Mars Anomalies, and he had did a great video utilizing that imagery from the USGS.gov. It penetrates 30 meters beneath the moon's surface. It looks like giant beams are there, which is pretty crazy. So, you know, it's just like, what's going on? We don't really know. We just know that they said the moon rung like a bell for hours when they, you know, when they hit it. Um, we know that it's in a very strange orbit on its axis. It's geo-locked with Earth's spin on its own axis. And uh, it's, it's talked about in ancient texts that people went there. And then we have Neil Armstrong saying he thinks people down there never get out. Is it all coincidence? Possible. But it's pretty interesting. So, uh, aliens living here. Um, Greer even talks about that, right? He even talks about that, the fact that, you know, is it is it internally? Have they been here? Have they found a way to, you know, coexist amongst us? And we don't even know. This kind of goes back to you mm -hmm. talking about the fact that, you know, if, if um, you, you know, being born without a father in the womb, hey, if I wanted to do this, there's a lot of ways that somebody could, you know, spin this mm -hmm. to convince that they're already down here, that's believable. One may sit there and say, this sounds pretty convincing. How, how much proof do we have that, you know, there's been instances or stories, other stories to say, no, 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 there is no disputing this. That That is 100%. You know, they're down here. Well, you just have to go again to our ancestors because they talk about these beings walking amongst them living amongst them. They drew pictures of them on petroglyphs in caves, in tablets and texts and cylinder scrolls and papyruses and, and, and in scriptures. 
So we, we know the descriptions. We know what they look like. We have statues all over the world. We understand that people were here that were humanoid, but not exactly human, that engaged mankind, which they, sh- and they shouldn't have, because according to these same people in the text, they say, the creator of all will punish us for what we did here. So they even knew that they were wrong and there was somebody even higher than them. Why would somebody say something like that? I mean, to write cuneiform is a very uh, strenuous process to take a, a wooden stick and turn it into a stylus and then make a wedge in wet clay and sit there and make all these crazy lines for thousands of hours, potentially, to come up with these sci-fi stories when it's time to go out there and hunt and gather. I don't think so. I think these people wrote down exactly what they saw and what they knew. All the megalithic sites around the world are nothing more than just more evidence for us. Such as? Well, you have the Great Pyramid at Giza. Okay, the Great Pyramid at Giza, just look at the, the Great Pyramid first of all. The Great Pyramid is exactly the height of all of the, the average height of all of the peaks on Earth. So if you had a polar orbiting satellite that orbited the planet this way, and as the planet, you know, spin on this axis, it can scan the planet, calculate how many peaks there are, take the average height of those peaks, that's the height of the Great Pyramid. And that's incredible. Now, you then look at the Great Pyramid, and you go, man, this is really wild. If you look at the Great Pyramid, the Giza Plateau looking down, you discover that the three pyramids and the, and the temples surrounding in that area you can connect them by lines. And when you connect them by lines in a grid pattern and then draw circles, concentric circles that line up with all those, um, those, 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 uh, those ancient sites, you then see a pattern. You can see it's an inner planetary map of our inner solar system, uh, Mer- the sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. If you take the NASA image all right, of the inner planetary solar system and lay it over that grid, it matches perfectly down to the AU, the astronomical unit, if you scale it up. Now, that's wild. How can that possibly even happen? The latitude of the Grand Gallery inside the Great Pyramid are the exact same digits of the speed of light in meters per second. Then go across the world to Mesoamerica, which is now Mexico, to Teotihuacan. That complex is built with the same exact alignment with the Orion system as the Great Pyramid and other two pyramids in, in Giza, but also... The Pyramid of the Sun is exactly 50% the height of the Great Pyramid and identical to the same size as the base. Same architect, same blueprint, different location. (laughs) Why do you think that is? Well, both. The Atlantean, he calls himself the Atlantean priest king, calls himself the son of Atlantis. See, these Anunnaki people, they were the ones who built the Atlantean civilization. He started having problems with his brother, Marduk. Marduk is in the Torah. He's in the Bible. He's in ancient Sumerian cuneiform tablets. He's also known to the Egyptians as Amun-Ra, okay? And they started having a battle because Amun-Ra, a.k.a. Marduk, wanted to take over kingship early, ahead of his processional period, and it was a big battle going on. He started a two wars. He started a pyramid war to, keep, to take over early, and he started a pyramid war to keep his reign even going longer. But, the, but their father, Ea Enki, said, listen— Though, go to the other side. Go, go over there to Mesoamerica. Let me deal with him. Go start a civilization over there. So he left, and he, he took Olmecs with him from Africa, and he started the Teotihuacan civilization. He built that long before the Mayans. The Mayans inherited what was already there, and you can learn that from homegrown archaeologists in Mexico. They will tell you that the Mayans built absolutely nothing. The Aztecs came hundreds of years later when a volcano erupted in their valley, destroyed their community. They stumbled across Teotihuacan as well, and they also inherited the the, the pyramids going all the way down into the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, And so this was built by a previous culture, and the Mayans are the ones who named them Teotihuacans. Now, what does Teotihuacan mean? The city of Tehuti. Who is Tehuti? Thoth is known as Tehuti in other parts of Africa. It's the same architect, the same man. (laughs) 